The Marble Rally. The sand has warmed up and the classic tournament is back for a seventh season. It's been a while since I talked about some of these athletes, and for others it will be my first time mentioning them. But the recaps don't write themselves, so I should start talking. Here's the A-League. Purple girl best! You screeched by in qualifiers, and thank goodness you did, because you saved me from throwing ghost plasma out a window. Amethyst had... how shall I put this? A really bad season. Two 19ths in a row, and then a dead last two races later. The second year fan favorite did their best impression of the Jacksonville Jaguars, where they have a wonderful start to their career and then proceed to do nothing for the next 20 years. I certainly hope this will not be the case for Amethyst as well. We already have enough trouble finding purple marbles as it is. There's no reason for them all to be absolutely trash. I got a sunburn! No surprises here. This marble is an eternal bottom feeder. Blazing Fireball reminds me of something that happened recently. I was on a vacation which required me to fly on a plane and not a single flight I took on the way down or the way back left on time. My point is, Blazing Fireball is a lot like air travel right now. It barely worked before, and it gets on everybody's nerves, but the only reason it ever makes itself known is because of some stupid crowd strike outage which screws everything up even further. One more thing. We have literally never seen Blazing Fireball on a podium camera. Ever. They are bad on top of bad. Not in a pitiful way, not in a funny way, but in a shameful way. Baby, this marble seemingly could not keep a consistent rhythm this season. A very nice goal in race 6, which put them in potential podium contention, followed by the debut of the Blizzard Blaster space program, which we don't get to see because who needs good camera work, right? Your other races were nothing special, just like a lot of the other things you do. If I were to describe your season, I'd do it like this. Here's race 6 and here's everything else. You'll need to do some soul searching and find out what marble you really want to be, because right now it's not hard for me to give you the cold shoulder. Cause I'm super hot, boy! If this tournament wants to beat the Marbula 1 allegations, then Super Bowl needs to not do well for once. I do not want to see all these new title contenders getting passed by a freaking soccer ball for the fourth time. Thankfully, you answered my call and came to a screeching halt after a double medal start. You're left to fight for a respectable finish along with everyone else. Let's hope it goes better for you this time. Of course, that's red number three. Oh, and we've got a DNF right out of the gate. Was that Super Bowl that just shot over the wall and is out? The more things change, the more they stay the same. A silver in the final race means you secure best of the rest, and your worst season is still a top five. I've given you a hard time before, but a specific Marble Earth writer has opened my eyes to you. Like, come on, you can't sit here and tell me this wasn't scripted. I am still glad you didn't win, though. You are fake news. In a similar vein, we have the so-called legend. I only really started paying attention to the rally in Season 6, so to me, the only things you're a legend of are catastrophic seasons and obnoxious fans. Are Red Number 3 fans better or worse than the folks who seemingly can't understand that the Marble League teams, in fact, do not race in the Marble Rally? That video's coming soon. In any case, you had a fair amount of ups and downs, which average out to a middle-of-the-road overall placement. Definitely not what was expected of you, but anything is better than... Yeah, that. It's okay, though. Everyone will just blame it on the surgery, and Red Number 3 will remain the golden child of this sport. You don't fool me. Now, you might be wondering, why is there a picture of a shower slowly becoming more and more visible? Because it's the perfect place for being washed up. Baba Bowie. You rolled into this season being the definition of forgettable, started off with some very noticeable and memorable performances, and then let us forget about you again. You had six races. That was your claim to fame. And then you finished the season by going 15, 12, 16, 17. What are you doing? You had this in the bag. I cared about you, which is impossibly hard to accomplish. And you threw it away for a sixth overall. Why even get my attention if you don't follow through on your promises? You'd make a great politician. I have 70 alternative accounts! <laughs> Keep your head on its swivel and continue your reign. Or just follow it up with a 15th. Your call. I was so close. Remember last season when you were the only marble to have no DNFs? Well, you clearly caught up on those. Three DNFs overall, with two of them being in races 9 and 10. Slimer is on a championship hangover. 
It sucks because I started liking you. But if you find more self-fulfillment in talking to the rescue crew that comes to pick your lazy glass up every race, then don't let me stop you. Have fun being part of the B-roll footage, and next time maybe learn what satire is so you don't blindly take my advice. Have fun taking 12th next season. You gotta be kidding me. You ever watch a cartoon character hit a wall and slide down? If you remember the last race of season 6, Grasshopper had a spirited discussion with the side of the track and tossed victory out the window. But they took that defeat seriously, and if they're anything like me, they work best when they're pissed off. So they immediately kicked Season 7 into high gear with their first ever win, and then did nothing else. At all. Fruit Fly Strikes Again, and that might be my first nickname that's actually aged well. 35 points in 9 races. You're supposed to go down the course, not down the standings. You thoroughly disappointed quite a few fans, but hopefully next season you can get more screen time. For the right reasons. Yeah, I couldn't find Nemo. Dragon! Nobody can really blame me for the way the season ended. It would have helped if you didn't try for a new high jump record in race 9, but aside from that, Dragon's Egg did pretty well this season. This was your chance to win the first championship of your illustrious career, and yes, I said first because double points is a sham. There were a lot of people rooting for you, and making far too many egg puns, so at least do them a favor and hold on to silver. I see. Couldn't stop the chickening. Apart from a rough finish, Dragon's Egg had a pretty solid redemption season after failing to qualify the year before. I would say to keep it up, but I know that you won't, so why even bother saying it? So, what did we learn? When you have a good spot in the overall standings, don't finish the final race in 18th. The majority of the season was good for Crazy Cat's Eye, but they never broke out and did anything special. They let a lot of marbles take advantage of their missteps. You'd think with five career wins, this marble would have some kind of overall podium, but the truth is they don't, and I think it's starting to get to them. Crazy Cat's Eye is never the best marble on the course. That is, I believe, the best one-sentence summary of this athlete. Enjoy everyone calling you Red Eye. Here's something that might blow your mind. Lollipop was sitting in 17th after race 5. 22 in the first half, 65 in the second half. They got every step of the podium out of the way in their last four races, and very few noticed until they snagged auto qualification. The thing I've noticed about Lollipop is that they really struggle at the start of the season. But every year they get their bearings eventually and cruise past a busted marble to finish in a satisfying overall position. This one just happened to be their best ever. I'm still not sure I like you, but... Okay, I'm sold. Where can I get that hoodie? Lollipop for the win, baby! You were in the A-League? Really? You sure? Because you definitely didn't race like it. No DNFs and a bronze medal, and you still finished one point behind a construction marble. When I say you have done nothing since your inaugural season, I mean you probably should have done nothing and you'd be better than you are right now. But you're gonna deny me the chance to see my turquoise ball on the podium and hold it over your head like it changes the fact that you are equally humiliating. The real reason you're called Phoenix is because your two fans get flamed for supporting you. Yeah, I am a god, Brandon. Wow, what a season. All it took was a new uniform. There are fans who are calling Blue Moon out for being notoriously bad and then suddenly running the table with a new look, but I'm the one who invalidates championships. Blue Moon played well. I knew something was different when they won silver in race 1, then they rode that success to a gold in race 4, and Thanos snapped the rest of the field with wins in 9 and 10. Overkill levels of dominance. I'm here for it. Congratulations to Blue Moon on a fantastic season, and thank you for giving my newly semi-truck certified possum friend something to smile about. But there's something else I feel like I should give you. The Best Bonk Award! This was actually a pretty tough contest, but the highlights of the A-League were Ghost Plasma checking their phone or something, Blue Moon giving Dragon's Egg a little boost, and what I'm calling Blazing Pinball. But Blue Moon wins the Best Bonk Award with their other nomination, showing exactly why this bridge is my favorite Marble Rally obstacle. Congratulations, Blue Moon. May you be immortalized in Bonk Legend. I don't know what I'm doing! You're riding some excellent momentum from Season 6. It's time to see what the real Silver Bolt is made of. Oh, you're bad, bad. You scored one point in half the races. But you won the closest race in Marble Rally history, beating out the previous record holder of... yourself, last year. 
You had good performances in races 5 and 7 as well, but everything else was just... there. I said don't turn into the Marble League Bolts. But so long as you're actually winning races, I guess I can't be too hard on you. Silver Bolt does at least show a lot of potential, which I cannot say about this next competitor. <laughs> He's already dead! 2,818 days. Need I say more? White Widow was the standout athlete of the qualifiers, and this is a real stat, that race was their best time of the season. It was also the only time they finished in the top six of a race. White Widow was destined for another season in the B-League, but instead we get to see the 10-act tragedy that is this marble trying to compete. You did better than two marbles, one of which was mine, but anyways, uh, hopefully you'll be seen again at some point in the next 3,000 days. But if not, who cares? Duct Tape was a very weird marble this season. They started off much the same way as Silver Bolt did, rode that so-called success to a win in Race 5, and then got stuck in neutral for the second half with only 21 points. Definitely not a terrible season, but it doesn't instill confidence in people who are willing to write you off as a one-season wonder. Rager found this out. In Race 9, Duct Tape overtook 8 marbles in the span of 2 seconds, only to DNF later on. That's kinda how the season went. So much promise, but not the result I expected or wanted. Hopefully you don't become the next cool Moody. That is my eyeliner! It's possible for this marble to get higher than 7th? What's interesting is that Pollo Loco started out the season around 7th overall, then they got a silver in race 4 which bumped them up to 3rd. A DNF in race 6 brought them back to 7th, then one race later they got some redemption, and this time they didn't give up the podium. A good end to the season as well, with no finishes below 9th. So, Pollo Loco gets their first overall podium, and in my opinion, it was pretty well deserved. Now, your goal is to keep doing well. This past auto qualifying class left a lot to be desired, and I do not want to see Pollo Loco following their example. So, it's finally time to talk about the real marbles in the competition. I don't think anyone doubted that the turquoise ball would do what they did in Season 7. A lot of people look at me and they say, You're not rooting for the right marble, buddy. You're delusional. You had one too many of those uh, brunch mimosas. And to that I say, you need a different perspective on Comet. He's so good that he... Took a rest stop on the course in one of the races because he knew he'd win anyway. And that's how good he is. And then here's the thing that everybody forgets about. If you take Comet's score and then multiply it by two, the guy won the whole thing. You can't argue with math, you know? So I hate to break it to you, but Comet is an absolute legend. And I'll see you all next season when he's a back to back champion. Mimosas. I don't even drink. What am I doing with my life? I'm not a man. <laughs> well, I warned you about what would happen if you screwed up this season. And I have no tolerance for those who don't listen to me. So before I begin, let me say this could have all been avoided if you were just... good. Ghost Plasma. You are the most disgraceful name that I have ever uttered. You really emphasize the former in Former Champion. Your performance in Season 7 has been nothing short of pathetic, a blemish on the very essence of competition. Marbles can roll faster uphill than you can roll downhill. You've become a shadow of your former self, a ghost indeed, haunting the track with your feeble attempts to do anything resembling actual talent. You're not just a disappointment, you're a cautionary tale. You get to watch from the bottom half of the standings as a newcomer wins three races this season and doesn't screw it up. So remember this moment, this definitive stamp on your career, because it's the only legacy you have left. Get lost. And that is the A-League of Marble Rally Season 7. I found a clip from one of the races that I think accurately describes the entire season. Roll it. Yeah, that's about all it was. This was definitely one of the seasons of all time. 
And if you feel like reliving some of the best moments from Season 7, check out my alternate commentary linked in the description. Thank you for watching, stay tuned for the B-League recap, and as always, ROLL THAT TURQUOISE BALL! Uh, on break, be back in 892 hours. We and you get paid for this? Your 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 receptionist is on break for 892 hours. Change the world. My final message. Is the turquoise ball ever going to be caught? That's the question. It's getting tighter. It looks like a four marble ray. Oh, we've had a we've had an accident, and now the turquoise ball is behind. The turquoise ball, the little ball that could, and this turquoise ball now is running fourth, now is running third and making a move. Making a move and following the same path as the two in front now in second and trying to get now back out in front. The turquoise ball, unbelievable. There's only a little ways to go left in this race. The turquoise ball not to be denied. If this was Marshawn Lynch, the turquoise ball would be backward and jumping into the end zone. Turquoise ball in an absolute runaway. Amazing.